Hello, I'm Eddie Reyes, the Director of Public Safety Communications. I'd like to welcome you to the Prince William County 911 Call Center. The center, located in the County Government Administration Complex at the newly renovated George T. Owens Operations Facility, contains state-of-the-art technology and room for growth. The main objective is to enhance the quality of life in the county through the efficient and professional handling of calls for service and the dispatch of public safety services in order to make Prince William County a safer community in which to live, work, and visit. The Department of Public Safety Communications, through its telecommunicators, are responsible for answering 911 and non-emergency public safety calls for the six cities and towns in the county. That's an area of approximately 350 square miles in size with a population of nearly half a million people. Often, telecommunicators are the first representatives of the county government to assist citizens in need. Previously, under the joint policy authority of the police department and the fire and rescue system, public safety communications became its own department in March of 2021. We are a 33-seat 911 center that is always open and standing by for 24 hours a day, every day for any emergency. Let me show you the center, come on in. Hello, my name is Lakeisha Claiborne. I've been working at Prince William County Department of Public Safety for about eight months as a call taker. My name is Thelma Maka and I've been a telecommunicator one with the Department of Public Safety Communications for the last 13 years. Out of those 13 years, 10 of those has been spent as a certified training officer. At Prince William County, we process approximately 416,000 calls a year, with 3,600 of them being foreign language calls, and we can also talk to anyone in any language. As a call taker, I'm responsible for all 911 calls, all non-emergency calls, all the foreign language calls, also the TDD system for the hearing impaired, and also all of the operating alerting systems. 911 call takers are important because we are the first line of defense. We are considered first of the first responders. Hello, this is 911. Where is your emergency? What is the location? When a 911 call comes into the center, the first and most important thing that we have to get is the location of the emergency. When a caller is unsure of the location of the emergency, we use several other programs such as Smart 911, Rapid SOS, and we also have a RAVE system that we use to pinpoint a more accurate location of where the resident is. Apart from these services and programs, we are also trained to ask additional vital questions as well as provide emergency medical instructions. Pertaining to their situation that they're having at that moment, we analyze what's going on and we determine what type of situation and put the call forward. We do use the medical guide cards, call them the EMD cards, to determine any type of medical issue and we can provide those instructions to the person over the phone. That way we keep that person stabilized while EMD is en route to them. This means that our emergency medical care has a zero response time. I'm also inputting everything that the resident tells me into the CAD system, updating the call as, as it comes to me. That way, the dispatchers are able to relay any updated information to the police, fire, or medical while they're en route to the situation. At times, things can change at the last moment. And as call takers, we are there to provide that reassurance. And we also, we're always learning new things about our residents when they do call in. So each call is unique in nature. And we, as call takers, we are trained to handle each call be it non-emergency to a full 911. As a call taker, we have to do our due diligence and provide as much possible information in that call for our dispatchers to relay it to police, fire, or medical. Hi, my name is Robin Merriman, and I am a telecommunicator too, which means that I'm trained as a call taker and as a police dispatcher. Our police department dispatches 
approximately 257,000 calls for service annually. Police dispatch is divided into three districts. We have the Eastern District, we have the Central District, and then we have the Western District. So I'm in charge of the police dispatch for the particular district I'm assigned to, and that can include up to, or sometimes even more than 50 officers at a time, depending on what their assignments are, what incidents we have going on at the time. We dispatch for a variety of different field units, from police officers to animal control officers. We dispatch for the co-responder unit, which responds to people in crisis. We dispatch parking enforcement officers, fire marshals even. So anybody who has a presence on the police radio, we will dispatch for them. One of the most important things we do as a police dispatcher is making sure that we have the necessary information to keep our officers safe. It's not just about protecting our community, which is one of our highest priorities, it's about protecting our officers and our responders. We use the same computer-aided dispatch system as our call takers do. It's all an integrated system. I can see our officers' movements. They have GPS in their car, so I can see them on our maps. We are trained in basic emergency medical information to help callers over the phone. We are trained to take care of our officers when they're in a crisis situation, getting them the assistance and the support and the tools that they need to do their jobs properly. We are not just relaying situational information to our officers, we're giving them warrant and teletype information. We're running license plates, we're running driver's licenses, we are checking wanted status, we are assisting other jurisdictions. That's all part of what we do. It's a, it's a kind of an all-encompassing job at times. And one of the things we can do for them as a police dispatcher is to make sure that they have the information to kind of fill in that picture for them. It's like, it's like a puzzle, and we're providing the pieces for that puzzle for them to put together as they arrive on the scene. Really, the most important thing we do is to be able to have compassion for the people that we're working with and working for. We have to remain calm for our officers who may be going through a really stressful situation. We need to be the voice of calm for their chaos. That's exactly what we do. At the 911 call center, we also have a warrants and teletype unit that assists with many of these requests and helps us uh, relay data and other important information to our officers. Hi, I'm Dominique Smith, teletype operator. I work for the Department of Public Safety Communications for Prince William County. The teletype and warrant unit is responsible for entering warrants, modifying warrants, and clearing warrants. We're also responsible for communicating with other agencies for the warrants that they enter, modify, and clear. We have about 9,000 entries a year. Of those 9,000 entries, we have about 5,000 criminal histories and about 3,500 toes. So when an officer arrives on scene, we're able to provide any information that they're looking for on a specific person on a specific piece of property, on a vehicle. The information has to be confirmed because it's always important for us to have a paper trail. The Open Fox system is pretty much what we use to do everything. If we need to run something, if we need to look up something, that's how we enter things, how we modify things, and how we clear things. With Open Fox, we can see national information. and We use the system of VSIN and NCIC, and it also gives other agencies access to see our information. What surprises a lot of people about our job is that there's a lot of accountability and responsibility that comes along with it. We are face to face with a lot of sensitive information, a lot of confidential information, and there's a lot of certifications and licenses that you have to get before you're even allowed to look up and have access to that information. If there's no record system, dangerous people could still be walking around um, because we'll have no idea that that person is actually wanted. If a piece of property is stolen, we'll have no idea that it's stolen even if we come across it and it'll never get returned. Although we do work with police officers and call taking in police dispatch, our work is, is separate from fire and rescue. Hi, my name is Ray Pannone. I've been with the county for about two years now and I'm a telecommunicator to fire dispatcher. Fire dispatchers cover the county of Prince William along with the cities of Manassas City and Manassas Park along with the four towns in Prince William County and we also provide mutual aid for outside jurisdictions. Prince William County receives about 47,000 fire and rescue calls a year. Our main focus when we get a call is to dispatch the correct units to the correct location to get help to the caller as fast as possible. We treat all calls equally, whether it's a major incident or a minor incident. We go out for everything and we try to prioritize the call based on the call type. And we do all this through our technology that provides us with a faster and better response. Through our CAD system, the call taker updates the call and provides the address and all the important information, and which then sends it directly to fire dispatch. We're going to verify the address and call type with the comments, and then us as dispatchers relay that information to the units in route and on scene. We have a system called AVO, which is pretty much a GPS system inside each unit, and it's going to let us know where exactly the unit is in the county so we can dispatch the closest unit available. Training and certification are essential to work here. Fire dispatchers are certified in APCO, 
we also are certified in EMD training and CPR, and this allows us to communicate with the units or callers on scene and give them first aid response. Safety is always the most important thing, not only for the caller and the residents on scene, but also for our units. We never want to send our units into a blind scene, and we always want to make sure they get to go home at night. Our training lab is always teaching us new things, and we're always learning constantly new technologies and keeping up to date with the current policies. Hi, my name is Deja Carradine. I am a supervisor here at Prince William County Department of Public Safety Communications. I am also one of the training coordinators. The training academy is basically like an adjunct academy. Uh, we have seven to eight weeks of classroom instruction where the new hires, or new trainees as they're called, will learn different disciplines that they need to learn out on the floor. Also, the second part of that is OJT, which is on-the-job training, where they graduate from their seven to eight week course here and get the on-the-job training with a certified training officer and learn out on the floor and take live calls. The biggest benefit of training is just nonstop learning. We have the four certified DCJS, which is Department of Criminal Justice Services, classes that they are mandated to take. And on top of that, we also teach in the classroom part, Prince William County courses, geography, they're learning the CAD program, which is the computer-aided dispatch, learning police call types, fire department overview, call types in general. We also teach for cultural bias, unbiased policing. We do some training in NCMAC. We also do some training in Alzheimer's and autism awareness as well. Different things that we know that they're gonna be getting when they get onto the floor, so we like to try and boost them up as much as we can with that. With this job, it's ever-changing. It's fast-paced environment, so you're only as strong as the person sitting beside you, and you want that training to be the best that it can be. Thank you for watching. For more information or if you want to join our team, please visit our website at pwcva.gov.